Hi, as promised in the description of the last video, the copper complex I'll be making today will be copper glycinate. To make it, I added 4.15 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate and 2.5 grams of glycine to an Erlenmeyer flask. Then I added 25 milliliters of water and started heating the solution. The temperature doesn't have to be exact, but it should not be boiling. About 60 to 70 degrees Celsius works well. Now while the reaction mixture is hot, I start neutralizing it with one molar sodium hydroxide. You can also use more concentrated solutions of sodium hydroxide. The more concentrated the solution, the less you need to add. Also, the end volume will be smaller, which will affect crystallization of the compound. I stopped the addition of sodium hydroxide when the solution was basic, which I tested with a universal pH paper. Initially, some bigger chunks of our compound crashed out of solution. And upon standing for 30 minutes, a large amount of tiny needle-shaped crystals had formed. I put the flask on some ice cubes to crystallize more product, and then filtered the crystals. I washed them with some water, and then with 50 ml of ethanol. I had a small amount of crystals left in the reaction vessel, and it was very mesmerizing to look at them while they were submerged in ethanol. The then slightly wet product was transferred to a glass dish, and then dried with an infrared light. The final yield of cis copper glycinate monohydrate was 2.81 grams, which is a yield of 72%. To see the needle like structure of the crystals better, I again employ my top tier microscope. This joke definitely won't get old. Of course, I promised all the isomers in the last video, so I will be needing to make the trans isomer of this complex as well. Fortunately, this is very easy to do from the cis complex, and I start by weighing out 0.5 grams of it into a vial and adding 5 ml of water. This mixture is now stirred for approximately four days. Now, the uninitiated among you will think, well, random science, how can there even be a trans and cis isomer if the complex is tetrahedral? Well, very good question. And in fact, if the complex were tetrahedral, we would not observe cis or trans isomers due to the nature of the geometry. In reality though, the complex looks more like this. And this is the usual geometry of a five coordinate copper two complex. And this geometry is called square pyramidal. In this geometry, the concept of cis and trans makes sense again and refers to the relative positions of the ligating atoms. The same being either next to each other, which would be the cis isomer, or across each other, which would be the trans isomer. And for anyone interested, I will be discussing the mechanism of ligand exchange in more detail at the end of this video. And this is how the complex looks after four days of stirring. It's a much more light blue color now and is very shiny. It has a sort of metallic look to it even, I'd say. Here are the two complexes besides each other for comparison. Both of these are the monohydrates.
looking at the compound under the microscope reveals that no needle-shaped crystals are left. Only platelets, maybe, uh, which are also pretty in their own right. Now a little side note on the mechanism of isomerization of this complex. To consider here are two types of mechanisms that may occur. One is an intramolecular mechanism, which would involve only one molecule of the complex to perform the isomerization reaction. And the other is an intermolecular mechanism, which would also involve free glycinate ions in solution. Basically, it was found that the intramolecular mechanism doesn't happen for this complex in solution, so let's focus on the intermolecular mechanism in a little more detail. The basis of this mechanism is the fact that the ligand bonds in the z-axis, which are marked in red, are elongated and thus make the geometry resemble a distorted octahedron. It is therefore closer to a square pyramidal coordination complex in its properties. This makes the ligands in the z-axis easily substitutable by other molecules. This is a picture from a book discussing the mechanism of ligand exchange in a copper-2 amino acid system. They propose this mechanism. And let's add the cis complex here as well, since it will probably have the same mechanism of ligand exchange. So in the first step, a water molecule from the distorted z-axis is exchanged for the amino group of a glycine. This still octahedral complex loses a weakly bound water molecule again and forms the trigonal bipyramidal species in the middle right. This can then again bind two water molecules and make the complex in the middle left which has three glycine molecules bound to it now. Now in the last step, you can imagine one of the glycine molecules bound only by the amino group, leaving the ligand sphere, and the other glycine binding with the carboxylic acid group, making our complex again. Now, depending on which amino acid leaves, we will either obtain the cis or the trans complex. In this case, the trans isomer predominates after stirring for a long time. I hope you enjoyed this video and the brief theory explanation at the end there. That was very fun to make. I think I will be doing more of that. And as always, thanks for watching.